Good morning, Connections. Glad you're here. We've been uh, orbiting around Hannah and Hannah's story found in 1 Samuel, first chapter, all week because Hannah handled sorrow well. She didn't dwell in it. She certainly expressed her agony, but to the Lord. She didn't give in to complaining and moaning and groaning to others. We started the week with Job, and Job was a righteous man. But where Job lost track was he began to complain and complain and soon filled the air with nothing but complaint. Now, in Job's case, Job had God's favor, and God sent him Elihu as a kind of a a word before, and then God himself shows up and sets Job straight. Consider yourself highly favored and blessed if God shows up in your life and speaks correction directly. It was enough to change Job's course and get him back tracking with God. You know who else struggled in keeping up with God and, and not falling into a lot of moaning and groaning and complaining, the Israelites. So we're going to turn the pages back a little bit from our Hannah story, Judges, back to Numbers. And we're going to look in on the Israelites as they are, are venturing in the wilderness. And certainly things are not going as they expected them to go, and they are experiencing hardship, not knowing where they're, they're going next, wondering if Moses is leading him around in circles. And there's a, such a large group that the complaining and the moaning and groaning takes seed and spreads throughout the entire community. And soon they're questioning not only Moses, but they're questioning God himself. Whether it's a lesson from Job or today, a lesson from the Israelites, you must recognize God is always listening. And hopefully from this story, you will gain an appreciation to not complain so much. Because if you complain too much, you can expect that God is going to show up and correct you. Let's see what happens. Numbers 11, starting in 1. Soon the people began to complain about their hardship, and the Lord heard everything they said. Then the Lord's anger blazed against them, and he sent a fire to rage among them, and he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people screamed to Moses for help, and when he prayed to the Lord, the fire stopped. After that, the area was known as Tabera which means the place of burning, because fire from the Lord had burned among them there. I pray that it won't take such a, a, a slap on the back of the head, or worse, from God himself to get you tracking back in the right direction. But God is willing, especially if the complaining that is in your heart is spreading to others that at some point drastic measures must be taken to cut it away. Now, prayerfully, it won't come to the extremes that God had to take with the Israelites. But better that than losing an entire community, losing the entire opportunity to bless generations and keep that remnant alive. Those are the stakes and those how, how we have to understand God's wrath. And when we see it poured out in the Old Testament, we have to have a better appreciation for, number one, who God is and who we know him to be. And number two, that the stake of, of all generations, if if the Israelites get it wrong here and a remnant is not, does not remain, does Jeff ever have an opportunity to, to receive salvation? 
those are the questions that we ask as we read through stories like we find here in Numbers. But I don't want to leave you today with this kind of dire warning, although it's helpful. I want to leave you with why you're having this devotion this morning, why you are tuning in each day and starting your day with God. It's because it's the only way to navigate the path ahead. It was the only way for the Israelites to navigate, and it's the only way for you to navigate. So as many different ways as we've expressed the importance of starting our day with God, the root of it is found here in the same story in Numbers, except in chapter 10. In 10, starting at 33, they marched three days after leaving the mountain of the Lord with the Ark of the Lord's Covenant moving ahead of them to show them where to stop and rest. As they moved on each day, the cloud of the Lord hovered over them. And whenever the Ark set out, Moses would shout, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Let them flee before you. And when the ark was set down, he would say, Return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. That's what we're doing in our morning devotional. That is the promise of God, that he goes before us and defeats the enemy before they ever have an opportunity to do harm. We pray that God would, would provide the armor so that we, when faced with all sorts of, of clever attacks from the devil, can fend them off. Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Let them flee before you. And of course, we want God's presence with us, especially when we, we come together on a Sunday and we are we are asking for his presence, and we want him to fill the sanctuary with his spirit, that is a time to say, return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel, of Connections Church. Be with us, Lord. Each and every step of your journey, God is with you. God sees and knows all. He hears every complaint, but he also hears every praise. I encourage you today to embrace God on this journey that he has set before you. It is the remnant that was willing to do that. Even in times of struggle and sorrow, they kept their eyes upon God. It is no different for you and I. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for bringing a better understanding of the journey that you took the Israelites on and its purpose and the journey that you are taking us on. The same lessons are available to, to us as they were to the Israelites. Also the same dangers. We pray, Lord, for wisdom. We pray, Lord, for guidance. We pray, Lord, that we would not lose faith. And then even in times of struggle, we would remember to look to you. That there is nothing that can come against us because you are with us. We set out today with confidence, trusting that you will protect us and give us the words to speak. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, looking forward to Sunday. I hope you are as well. Until then, know that I love you and I miss you, and please be good.